that YouTubers was here today we're going to do a comprehensive review on the MT FZ 10 Yamaha 21,316 k started instead of stopped it <laughs> all righty so let's start from scratch eh? I have a 2016 Yamaha M10 or FZ10 cross plane crank so the CP4 let's see now it's a 998 cc liquid cool engine the maximum uh, power standard is 118 kilowatts or 160.4 ps at 11,500 rpm the torque is 111 or 111 newton meters uh, or 11.3 um, kgm at 9,000 rpm six-speed gearbox the weight is 210 kilograms. The fuel is 17 liters. The front suspension is 23 millimeter telescopic forks. And the rear is swing arm suspension, R1 based. The front tire on these standard R120, rear 190, and their Battle Axe S20s. These bikes have traction control. That. Your traction control TCS. When I hit that, see if we can't get the both. Uh, this way. Two, three. Back the other way. And if you hold it. Yes, it does. It turns off. So I leave mine in traction control one. You have power modes. There's the power mode button. You should be able to see both, I hope. Let's see if we can't do it that way. A mode. B mode. Standard mode. Standard mode is the smoothest and cruisiest mode. A mode is in between. B mode is your most aggressive on this particular bike. Last week, I did a 515, well, 514k ride, uh, just continually through different hills and mountain ranges. Let's see now. Front tire is starting to look really nice. Really happy with that. I can brake late. I'm starting to really feel confident on this bike. I've upgraded to the Battle Axe S21F on the front. Now, my next lot of tyres I'll probably upgrade to a more stickier tyre, just, just for the way I ride and for the track days and stuff like that. But overall, um, the, the tyres provided good contact with the road. The, they're good for two race track days. Um, and overall, they've been a great tyre. My previous battle axe I got 10,000 k's out of, but I was mainly doing, you know, one track day I did on them, and um, the rest of it was highway and mountain miles. So that was really good. Front and rear around the same. Uh, I wouldn't expect some people ride more aggressive than me. All right, well, let's go through our different things. So. The things we want to talk about, fuel, so 17 litre tank, the cross plane crank engine certainly feels like it goes through fuel uh, and you'll see a lot of people commenting the fuel range isn't very good. I think there's some things that we actually need to look at. Some of the things that feel negative, fuel goes from there to halfway and there's sort of like no in between mark. 
I prefer to see it sort of come down so you can gauge what you're actually doing on the road and, and how the fuel is, is working. But it sort of goes down to there. And then it goes a bit quicker here. Then it hits empty and you've actually got a big range when it hits empty and the fuel light comes on. Now, most of the time when we think about a fuel light coming on, we think about 14 Ks to a garage and, and that can be quite discerning. But these bikes, 40 to 60 Ks to a garage, depending on how you're riding, that's quite a lot of Ks. So the fuel range for these particular bikes um, uh, would be, the reality is, 180 to 220 kilometers. So that's roughly about what it does. So that's the thing that you've got to get in your head. What does the fuel do? When you have reserve, you've got 40 to 60 k's. I, I sort of like look at 40 <laughs> and a little bit up. I've done that. It's It does it. Okay? So if you can wrap your head around that, yes the fuel isn't as good as some bikes, but still at the end of the day, it's still not bad, is it? All right, let's go to the standard seat. The standard seat on these particular bikes. I find the standard seat all right. It's softened up. I've had no real problem with it. You can get an aftermarket seat. I've heard there's warranty issues with them. Where uh, here the... Uh, um, the frame pops out of the of the work and the seam comes undone. I've had no real issue with this seat um, I would say that if I was going to do touring on this I'd just put a little bit of a cover on it, a lambswool cover or whatever for that Pacific touring and you could that, that seat's fine. But anyway, some people change it. If you change your seat you've got to allow for it to be a bit thicker. I hear on the forums two to three inches thicker and so therefore, if you're a little shorter, the distance to the ground is going to be different. So, that's that bit there. The suspension. I'll try and get the camera right in. Your suspension is adjustable. Okay, it is adjustable. It's set up on the firm side. It's based upon R1 suspension. Don't know, can we get in there? You can see, I hope, preload and all the different settings there. I have never touched my suspension. I find that if I'm on real bumpy surfaces, my weight is about 85 kilos, so weight is, an effect, is something that affects you um, and your suspension setup and I guess height. So I'm right out on the edge of my tyres. I'm able to brake deep on this bike and hook the corners and it's just getting better and better. And so if I'm on a bumpy road, what I actually do is, because my throttle is sensitive in B mode, and if I'm on a bumpy road, why well, have firm suspension and fastest mode and then have this jerking back and forth between suspension, bumps, power, that's how you come unstuck. So I just put it back to standard mode or A mode, and I find that nails it. I get a much smoother run at it. So having said that, people are upgrading the suspension on these bikes. Now you can upgrade the suspension on a standard bike or go to the SP model and that will then, I, I believe it's around three grand, two and a half to three grand to upgrade front and rear and you've got yourself uh, an absolute winning bike but what I'm going to do is I was speaking on a forum or just sent out a message the other day on a forum to ask what they thought of the suspension do they need upgrading because like I really haven't felt the need but some people have said uh, they've done it some people have said ask me if I tuned the suspension to my weight I actually haven't done that so that's the next thing I'm going to do $50 is all it takes to tune your suspension and see what it does. One person I spoke to said that the suspension on them, you can't, you know, they've not had much success tuning them. Another person, triple um, X rated suspension, 
uh, have said that they've had good results with just tuning the suspension. That's the next thing I'm going to do and we'll talk about that. So that's all very exciting, I'm looking forward to that and that's next week I'm going to go down and see him. It's a bit of a journey, there on the, if you're in Brisbane or Sunshine Coast or down the coast, that they, they are Roachdale I think, I've got his, no, his address somewhere so that'll be good. Triple X rated suspension, I've had quite a few people recommend them, that's a good thing. So let's have a look now, seat fueling, out of the box 2016 model fueling I had a bit of an issue with I put the Acropovic muffler on that caused a flat spot at 6,000 rpm that was affecting my judgment on how to ride the bike I'd accelerate it had hit this this um, rich spot at, at this 5,000 rpm five and a half and which would dull it and you're thinking it's just about to go hard and it's not and then all of a sudden there's this massive big wall 10 horsepower variation that would just go from rich to lean just like that which was then the front wheel would go ding <laughs> and I shit myself excuse the expression so I really wanted that fixed so I went and got a Woolwich race tune most of you people that have seen my videos will know I have a Woolwich race tune a Woolwich quick shifter I highly recommend them. They gave me a little key tag. It's beautiful. <laughs> the quick shifter. Uh, the 2017 model come with an up shifter. This particular model has no shifter. There it is there. Okay. Now we've set it up upside down so that it, all of this mechanism doesn't get dirt and crap in it. And we'll see how that actually works. Because really the reality is you'd think that the water and stuff would get in there however Fred from Pro Cycle Dinos uh, did the work and we really gained that 10 horsepower figure I'll just put a uh, I'll put the uh, information on this video and I'll I found it to be very helpful. I love the quick shift, and my last video was about the quick shift, so we don't need to go there. The tyres we talked about um, S20 and S, S. I've upgraded to the S21R, I thought it was. Battle Axe and F, S21F on the front. I'm really starting to enjoy them. We've used up all our tyre, but you can see I mainly just keep around there. The front, I have lost traction once or twice, but only on cold surfaces. I hadn't worn up the tyre. I come up through a mountain range, went around the corner. There was water wash out on the road. Both front and rear went out. That scared the bee willies out of me, but I know that the tyres were still cold. You know, beautiful. It, you know let's go on to brakes brakes everyone's going yeah the brakes are no good dude they're just crap on this they're no good but there's been reviews showing the brakes are better than most of the models out there now I'm a firm believer there is no point in doing heaps and heaps of upgrades on a brand new bike nothing's worn in nothing's bed in nothing's done anything so with that in mind how are the brakes? I'm finding enough confidence to brake deep into a corner, coming up to it. Um, it works. They work fine. It's a case of perhaps they don't work as good as a super bike. Okay, so a full fairing super bike with a top speed of 300 and whatever k's, and you want to brake hard, and they bite, and they you know they brake hard. But these particular bikes. Um, being a super naked I believe that they've set the brakes up well when my brake pads wear out I'm not going to do it beforehand but when the front tire needs doing and the brake pads are on their way out I'll upgrade to a set of Brembo brake pads I think it is and that's it I don't find any problem with the brakes I can ride this bike reasonably good and I find the brakes to be confident inspiring and they've bed in more and more and I only need two fingers to brake hard 
two fingers only I don't need to grab a fistful of the bars and, and hold on tight and yes I come from uh, Harley's yep an old bike so uh, of course uh, the brakes on this bike are much much better but I mean and I can relate to the fact that if you come from a super bike where you one finger on the brakes and you brake hard and, and they work that you might find these daunting but I mean over time given time I've got the 21,000 blah 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 now it's taken time to learn to to get used to this bike and I mean some people might be faster riders but I mean at the end of the day if you can use all this on the street and track well then yeah I reckon your upgrade is worth it but I mean most people can't use them all you can't it's impossible you 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 you've, there's so much horsepower there's so much grunt there's so much here as a whole package that is friggin awesome so no nah, I don't see most people needing those things uh, why waste your money you're not going to get it back but anyway that's the way it is I think the brakes are fine I think they work great let's move on from there so we've done muffler yes I had done the acropovic pipe yes I'm happy with it the midsection pipe changing that I would lose X amount of kilos uh, by doing that off the bike which would make the bike go faster the change in actual horsepower is only two to three horsepower variation so I mean it's not a lot it's the weight loss where you gain uh, radiator guards there was only one guard on this particular bike when you buy them I'm a firm believer in uh, radiator guards and oil guards so you should get those put on straight away before you even drive it out of the showroom a must wind protection at high speed on the track I notice that this is good enough for some reason for 160 170 k's on the track down the straight then you just pop your head up and use your head as a brake make sure you're holding on tight <laughs> and it works cruise control um, there's cruise control there are some days when I think it's hard and, but it's really easy cruise control press this button here did you see that light come on when you get to your designated speed, press that button there. Really, is that hard? No, that's not hard. All right, so your selection modes, that's for fuel and distance and blah, blah, blah. We talked about that one, high and low, passing, indicate left and right. That's something that I, would, would, well, that I really miss from the Harley. You put the indicator on, it stays on. I'm so used to Harleys, I keep on forgetting and the indicator's on for K's down the road. <laughs> So it'd be nice to see a cancelling indicator on one of these bikes. Horn, blah blah blah, stop start, blah blah blah, modes, hazard lights. Pretty well simple, eh? And for most people, simplicity is a great thing. Have I gone through all my list? I forgot to say lights. Okay, so the lights on the MT-10, I wouldn't say that they're the best. They're better than previous lights I've had on bikes. But I mean, when you go around the corner, up in the mountains at night, and you know your bike dips, the light dips as well. And then you know you go to high beam, it doesn't do it as much. But then if a car's coming, you got to whack it back down again. So I, I think that upgraded models, or perhaps there's something you could do to upgrade the light and just make them that bit better. But right now, I wouldn't rate them as the best that you could get on a, on a standard bike. And I would say that they're more like a, a six, to be honest. I say two. Two? Well, my partner says two, but I say it's about six. Because at the end of the day, it does its function in a straight line, but not so much around a corner. And that's really where you need it, in a corner, isn't it? Anyway, cheers. Overall, this bike, is a sensational bike to upgrade to or to downgrade to if you're starting to get a little bit oh, arm cramps and 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 you find a super bike is just a bit too much so this is a great bike where you're, you're sort of more upright sensational uh, just before we go on the grab rail I put a shade 
backpack thing on it. I find it fine. Um, absolutely great to have. I took it to the racetrack. I put that on. I loaded it up. I put a big bag with 40 litres of petrol in the back here because there's no petrol and tied it all to it and come from up the coast here down to um, um, uh, down to Brisbane to Lakeside, filled it up at the garage there, drove it, didn't use all that fuel, thought I would but didn't, drove it um, back up the coast, all worked well, you can have a great weekend away with just that and tie your other luggage to the back. Let's see now, have we covered everything? Do I think this bike is value for money? Absolutely. And we were going on to, if you were coming off a sports bike, this is a great bike to come to. The price is good. Yeah, it's a great price. Absolutely great. Let's see if I can't get some of the stuff. LED lighting. Suspension can be tuned. There's the other tuning part there. I find the brakes fine as we've discussed. The pipe was a good investment. Upgrade your tires when you want to, but these ones here are fine for most people. I believe if you've got pillions, you can get some drop down, drop down things. It's a little high, but it's better than most bikes. If you're coming from a Harley or a Cruiser and you want to just have a bit more power, these things are good. These are a lifesaver, a must have. I've discussed this before. I had a little crash when I had a cracked rib and I first tried out my uh, launch control. I just wasn't mentally, physically in the right place and neither was my clutch. My clutch needed adjusting and I still did it anyway without thinking of anything. I was in B mode. I mean, so many things that I didn't anticipate and think about before I had a crack at it. It had a stack. These things save the bike, I'll show you on this side. Can you see any damage? No damage. How good is that? A little nick there, there was a little nick there which is easy to polish out. And there it is there. I lost that, that's a bit round. Yeah, and you can get these, replace these easy. Oggy knobs saved this bike from a little bit of a spill. And it was only a small one, but I mean, it only takes a small one to add thousands of dollars damage to a bike. Drop it on the ground and Bob's your uncle. There you go. You've <laughs> spent thousands fixing it. Oh, I scraped a little bit there too. Little sticker. You can't tell. Dude, it looks sensational. Okay, you come off a Harley. The power on this is... It, it, oh, you can spend a lot of money making a Harley go fast. You can spend a lot of money. And if you want to go to from a, 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 a cruiser and you want a little bit more sport like I did... This is a great stepping stone. I think this will do me for the rest of my life for everything it does. I took my daughter this morning on it. Um, uh, we went in B mode. Uh, sorry, we, we, we went in standard mode. We just cruised around. It done the cruising bit easy. She just had a ball. And, you know, a little bit of a squirt here and there. Just a tiny little bit and uh, just enough power there to give her a little bit of a, a, a shout out and see what she thought and she was as cool as cucumber and guess what the shade backpack clip it on and it's got a little cushion there she's safe she can hold on she's got a new technique now where she puts her hands around the collar of my leather jacket and if she feels like she needs to thumbs down she just chokes me how good's that that's called smart thinking but anyway there it is the MT-10, the FZ-10, how are they? How do they rate? For me, I, I think this bike overall is definitely nine out of 10. Okay, some people will say it's not. Some people will give it less, but it is individual flavor, individual taste. I would say that it's a must that you do the fueling. I do believe the newer models have a better fueling. I think that a muffler is all you need just to add a little bit more noise. And so this is aftermarket stuff. The middle cat, if I could remove that, I would. 
but I want a quieter pipe and I keep on hearing that they can, they can be really noisy so I'm just not going to go there and if you do do that you need to fix your fueling on it so you, I, I would need to go back to Fred at ProCycle Dinos and get another tune put in if I was to do that as well so that's a bit of a deterrent next week anyway we're going to look at the suspension we're going to see what I've been living with for 21,000 Ks and what I've enjoyed and if it can even if it can even get better so I'm gonna check that out and I'm a bit excited about that so we'll see in the next video I do if that has improved anything if I feel it has and I would wonder and if anyone wants to give me the feedback I would wonder whether the full suspension upgrade how much is it worth it if I was at Lakeside and I had half experience on this bike I was half confident in it and I did a minute and eight seconds a minute and nine seconds somewhere around there was one of my best laps if I upgraded the suspension and put uh, uh, just doing that keep to the standard tires just do that is it gonna gain five seconds would it gain five seconds of the track That'd be interesting. I know if I added new tyres and stickier tyres I'd gain. And it'd just be interesting to see for the price, two and a half to three grand, would you gain a lot from doing the suspension or is it just about confidence? And I guess at the end of the day, confidence is everything. If you're more confident on a bike, you can go faster. But speed necessarily isn't everything. So like I said, if I change to standard mode on a bumpy road, I'm actually faster than a guy in B mode on a bumpy road with better suspension because at the end of the day B road is a little snatchy it is a little bumpy even with the tune A and A and standard are your best options feedback is great tell us what you think of your bike or whether you thought about upgrading or anything you think that you want to disagree with I'm all up for it cheers and thank you so much